Saudi Arabia is the world's largest producer of desalinated water. Saudi Arabia is well known for its blistering heat, infinite ocean of dunes, and one of the world's most hostile climates. However, in the not-too-distant past, this was different. Saudi Arabia has effectively converted its desert into green farmland and is now a food-importing hub. For a country that previously had to import 90% of its fresh produce, this incredible achievement has stunned the whole world and science industry. But how did Saudi Arabia achieve such a fantastic feat? Keep watching this video till the end to find out. Saudi Arabia's agricultural progress has been astounding during the previous three decades. Large expanses of the desert have been converted into agricultural fields, which is a significant achievement in a country that receives only around 4 inches of rain per year, one of the lowest rates in the world. Did you know that Saudi Arabia currently exports wheat, dates, dairy products, eggs, fish, poultry, fruits, vegetables, and flowers to markets worldwide? Dates, formerly a mainstay of the Saudi diet, are now farmed primarily for worldwide humanitarian relief. One of the key factors that's contributed to this program is the use of advanced technologies for irrigation and water management. Agriculture policy is primarily the responsibility of the Ministry of Agriculture. Other government institutions include the Saudi Arabian Agricultural Bank (SAAB), which provides subsidies and interest-free loans, and the Grain Silos and Flour Mills Organization, which buys and stores wheat, builds flour mills, and manufactures animal feed. The government also provides land distribution and reclamation initiatives, as well as funding for research projects. The private sector has been critical to the kingdom's agricultural growth. This is primarily because government initiatives provide long-term, interest-free loans, technical and support services, incentives such as free seeds and fertilizer, low-cost water, fuel and power, and duty-free imports of raw materials and machinery. Except for a tiny coastal strip in the southwest, agriculture on the Arabian Peninsula has traditionally been limited to date farming and small-scale vegetable production in the widely dispersed oasis. Small parcels of land supplied enough food for the local populations, with any excess sold to passing caravans. In the 1970s, severe agricultural development began. The government developed a comprehensive program to promote modern farming technologies, build rural roads and irrigation networks, build storage and export facilities, and stimulate agricultural research and training institutes. As a result, the production of all whole foods has increased dramatically. Saudi Arabia is currently self-sufficient in various items, including beef, milk, and eggs. Water is, of course, the lifeblood of agriculture in Saudi Arabia. The kingdom has successfully developed a comprehensive program to deliver the water required for the agriculture sector's extraordinary expansion. A dam network has been constructed to capture and utilize valuable seasonal floods. Deep wells have tapped vast subsurface water resources. Desalination plants have been built to create fresh seawater for urban and industrial usage, freeing up other supplies for agriculture. Facilities are also in place to treat urban and industrial runoff for agricultural irrigation. Collectively, these initiatives have contributed to the transformation of enormous swathes of desert into rich agriculture. Land under cultivation increased from fewer than 400,000 acres in 1976 to millions of acres by the 21st century. Let us now discuss Saudi Arabia's agricultural achievements. The 1970s saw the kingdom's first substantial agricultural development. The government developed a comprehensive program to promote modern farming technologies, build rural roads and irrigation networks, build storage and export facilities, and stimulate agricultural research and training institutes. As a result, the production of all natural foods has increased dramatically. Saudi Arabia is currently self-sufficient in various consumables, thanks to large volumes of meat, milk, and eggs. Food imports fell proportionally as food output expanded. Saudi Arabia today exports wheat, dates, dairy products, eggs, fish, chicken, vegetables, and flowers to markets worldwide. Early in the program, intensive dairy, meat, poultry, and egg production were all established. By 1985, local farms were meeting domestic demand for several formerly imported items. The kingdom today contains some of the largest and most advanced dairy farms in the Middle East. 
The milk production rate is one of the highest in the world, at 1,800 gallons per cow per year. While conventional offshore fishing has consistently increased fish productivity, the kingdom is looking for ways to improve the capture and encourage more private involvement. Aquaculture is one of the emerging sectors in which the private sector invests with government assistance. The number of fish farms, whether in the sea or on land, has constantly been expanding. The majority in is Saudi Arabia's Red Sea coast. Shrimp farming has proven very profitable. For example, the national shrimp company Al Rubian has a farm south of Jeddah run by Saudi hydrobiologists and marine engineers, whose shrimp, including the prize black tiger, is mainly sold to the United States and Japan. The kingdom's most notable agricultural achievement, recognized worldwide, was its fast transition from wheat importer to exporter. The nation erected its first grain silos in 1978. It had become self-sufficient in wheat by 1984. Soon after, Saudi Arabia began exporting wheat to 30 countries, including China and the former Soviet Union. The average yields in the key producing areas of Dabuk, Hel, and Qasim reached 3.6 tons per acre. Saudi farmers cultivate many other grains, such as barley, sorghum, and millet. Wheat and other grain production are significantly decreased to conserve valuable water resources. On the other hand, the kingdom has increased fruit and vegetable output by upgrading agricultural practices and the highways connecting farmers to urban customers. Saudi Arabia is a significant fruit and vegetable exporter to its neighbors. Watermelon, grapes, citrus fruits, onions, squash, and tomatoes are among its most productive crops. The Al Hikmar research station in Jizan, in the country's well watered southwest, grows tropical fruits such as pineapples, pawpaws, bananas, mangoes, and guavas. This agricultural change has transformed the country's traditional diet, providing a variety of native delicacies previously imagined. Dates are no longer the necessary staple that they once were for Saudi Arabians, but they remain an essential supplemental food. Much of the yearly output of dates, which is believed to be over half a million tons and include approximately 450 distinct varieties, is utilized for worldwide humanitarian relief. Several factories, including one in Al Hassa, are entirely dedicated to the production of dates for foreign aid and donate tens of thousands of tons of dates each year to alleviate famine and food shortages, primarily through the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization's World Food Program WFP -FAO. Many nations have directly benefited from Saudi Arabia's WFP food aid. The kingdom ranks second only to the United States in terms of contributions to the program. What about the government programs that were fully implemented? The Saudi agricultural sector's recent development has been primarily attributable to various government programs, including the supply of low-interest loans and technical and support services. Low-cost water, gasoline and power, as well as duty-free imports of raw materials and machinery have benefited agriculture. Foreign joint venture partners of Saudi people or firms are free from paying taxes for up to 10 years, and investment laws since April 2000 provide further advantages. The Ministry of Agriculture is the central body in charge of executing agricultural policy and providing farmers with research and extension help. The Saudi Arabian Agricultural Bank SAAB, is another aid organization that provides subsidies and interest-free loans. The grain silos and flour mill organization were founded in 1972 to acquire and store wheat, build flour mills, and make animal feed to promote the nation's agricultural boom. Saudi Arabia has invested significant financial resources to improve highways connecting producing areas with consumer markets to stimulate private investment in the agricultural industry. Furthermore, the Land Distribution and Reclamation Program, launched in 1968, intends to distribute fallow land for free, primarily in small plots, to increase the area under cultivation and encourage agricultural and livestock production. Beneficiaries must develop at least one quarter of the land surface within two to five years. Following compliance, the farmer receives complete ownership of the land. Under the development plans, the government continues to support new farmers in capital-intensive projects, specifically focusing on diversification and increased efficiency. 
the government finances and supports research programs to boost farm production to develop new food crops, increase yield, and develop plant lines with higher insect resistance. Local farmers and scientists collaborate on these projects at agricultural research sites at Saudi universities and colleges. Now, let's talk about the water resources. Saudi Arabia is a desert nation with no permanent rivers or lakes and limited precipitation. Water is rare and exceedingly important, and the country's fast expansion is increasing the need for water. As a result, the kingdom has turned to new methods to produce adequate water to maintain its expansion. The Ministry of Water and Electricity is in charge of all water-related issues. In Saudi Arabia, aquifers are a crucial source of water. They are massive underground water reservoirs. The government made a significant effort to find, map and estimate the capacity of such aquifers. Consequently, tens of thousands of deep tube wells were drilled in the most promising places for urban and agricultural usage. The sea is another important source of water. This is accomplished by desalination, which converts saline salt water into drinkable water. Saudi Arabia produces the most desalinated water in the world. The Saline Water Conversion Corporation SWCC, has 27 desalination plants that generate over 3 million cubic meters of drinkable water daily. These facilities produce more than 70% of the water consumed in cities and a sizable amount of industrial demands. They are also a significant source of electricity generating. Dams are used to collect surface water following frequent flash floods. More than 200 dams gather an estimated 16 billion cubic feet of runoff annually in their reservoirs. The Wadi Jizan, Wadi Fatima, Wadi Bisha, and Najran have some giant dams. This water is mainly utilized for agriculture and is dispersed over thousands of kilometers of irrigation canals and ditches to enormous stretches of formerly fallow productive land. The utilization of recycled water is a growing source of water. The kingdom intends to recycle up to 40% of the water used for residential purposes in metropolitan areas. Recycling factories have been developed in Riyadh, Jeddah, and other large metropolitan industrial hubs for this goal. Irrigation of farm fields and urban parks is done with recycled water. This not only helps to conserve fresh water resources, but it also allows for the expansion of agricultural production in areas where water is scarce. In conclusion, Saudi Arabia has successfully turned its desert to green farmland through a combination of innovative technologies, government initiatives, and private sector investments. The country has large-scale irrigation projects, desalination plants, and the government is invested heavily in agriculture to increase food security and reduce the country's dependence on food imports. The private sector also played a key role in turning the desert green through large-scale agricultural projects. The country still has challenges like limited water resources and population growth, but with the right policies and investments, it's well on its way to continue making progress and becoming a major producer of agricultural products. This video has come to an end. Thank you for watching. You now understand why Saudi Arabia's deserts are becoming green. But what are your thoughts on this occurrence? Let us know what you think in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe for more.